In this video we're going to take a look at the Twisty Business Challenge from the Kernel CTF that was running over the weekend. The description says, Some bees convinced me to invest in their new crypto system. They said their new XOR keystream would revolutionize the crypto market. However, they quickly buzzed away, so all I have is this weird flyer they dropped. Luckily, it has some source code on the back. Have I really just been scammed by some bees? So we've got this encrypted flag in hex. Uh, we've got a note here to say that the flyer isn't important. I didn't actually look at the flyer. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I'm glad that's not important because I wouldn't know where to start with it. Um, we also have the Python script there to download this honeycomb.py. So we've already got that downloaded. Let's go and open it up and take a look at it. I'm going to open that up in Codium. And let's just have a look through this, see how it's working. We've got a honeycomb class and you can see here it's creating an instance of this class it's passing in osu random six so it's getting oh let me highlight that it's getting six random bytes from dev u random and that's going to pass through let's see what happens when it initializes when it initializes it's going to set self.vals to the be the key so we're, we're sending the key through as a parameter it's basically setting the values here to that key um, we've got a turn function here, let's see where it's being called though, so we have the encrypt function down here, that's what's called first, so we'll trace it in that order and whenever we call encrypt it's going to create a keystream and while the length of the keystream is less than the length of the message, obviously the length of the keystream starts off at zero so while that is less than the length of the message, which is going to be the flag it's going to append self.vals to keystream and then it's going to do self.turn and self.turn is just kind of reordering the array a little bit each time this OS you random it's going to send one of the items to the end I think it's better to kind of visualize that so I'll go through that in a second but um, it's basically going to go through that until it has built up a whole key stream so um, if we were doing a if this was just passing in a six byte key and we had you know say a 48 byte um, flag then it's gonna it, if we were doing this XOR operation that we have here it would just be XOR in the same six bytes against each six bytes in the flag um, that would mean that if we can work out what the key is we can just XOR each six bytes with the six byte key in this case it's building up a key stream so each six bytes of the key are gonna be slightly different to the six bytes before it because um, you can see it's doing the shift here so it'll just make it slightly more complicated than a standard XOR operation and the reason the XOR operation is a problem is because we uh, because it's reversible if you have any two pieces of information you can basically reverse the the output let's go and actually test what that looks like um, sorry if this is going over the basics which a lot of people might be familiar with but I think it's good in case uh, people aren't if, if we have something some plain text here let's say we've got a byte of plain text I'm just gonna make this up um, there we go and we have a key uh, let me align it uh, let's, so we'll just make up a key as well oh we can't put a 2 in it um, let me change that just so it's a, li a little bit more different um, and then we're going to get our encrypted um, our ciphertext which we'd send through to somebody to decrypt oh. um, and this is basically just going to XOR these, so one XOR with zero is going to be a one, one XOR with zero is going to be a one, one XOR with zero is going to be a one, one and one is going to be a zero, zero and zero is going to be a zero, uh, zero and one is going to be a one, and one and one, zero, zero and zero, zero. So we've now got a ciphertext, we can send that through to whoever we want to send our message to, and as long as they have this key, they'll be able to recover the plain text. So they'll basically uh, let's say they have those two pieces of information and now they'll XOR them they'll get 1 and 0 is a 1 1 and 0 is a 1, 1 and 1 is a 0 1 and 0 is a 1 and then 0, 0, 1, 0 um, and you'll see that we've ended up with the exact same plain text that we had there the problem then is if an attacker has they don't have the key but they have the ciphertext and the plain text. And if they've got the ciphertext and the plain text, because it's a reversible operation, um, they're just going to be able to retrieve the key by doing the exact same process. So 0, 0, 1, 1, 
zero one one zero and you can see that has retrieved our original key um, so that's just a bit about how why this is an issue the reversible XOR operation and as long as we know some of the of, of two of these pieces of information we can reverse it and in this case we know that the flag begins with flag and then this curly brace so we've got the first five bytes essentially of the plain text and we have the cipher text as well so if we XOR those first five bytes of the cipher text with those first five bytes of the plain text we'll recover the first five bytes of the six byte key. Uh, one other thing I'm going to do is just show as well that um, in approaching this and working out how the key stream was generated, um, I find it easy to kind of just visualize that by modifying some of the code. So uh, in this case, I went here and said um, one and then two, three, four, five, six, and it'll just make it easy to work out the what's actually happening with the order here. So we can send those through, oh sorry, we don't want to send through OS random obviously. Um, so we'll send through this list of chars in this case, and whenever we generate the key stream, we'll generate it, and actually after each after each iteration, we'll, we'll call print keystream and we have our flag here let's just try and run that see what happens python honeycomb so you can see here we've got one two three four five six one two three four five six six one two three four five and then the next iteration we've got one two three four five six six one two three four five five six one two three four and it keeps going and you can see then it's going to keep going until it's got to the length of the flag. In this case, we, you know, we don't, we don't actually have the full flag here. What we'll actually do, I'll go and grab this uh, encrypted flag, and we can add that there. Uh, I'll leave that as bytes for now. So if we do that this time, it'll be even longer because it's going to keep going until it's got to the length of the whatever it's trying to encrypt. Um, so that just kind of helps work out, but yeah, essentially each time it goes through, it's just shifting over one. Um, and we just need to remember that whenever we're gonna try and crack this. Um, so what are the first bytes of this gonna be? Um, we know, let's, we don't want this anymore. Let's change this and say bytes, and we're gonna pass in a list, and we wanna find out what are the first five. So what I'm gonna do is grab one, two, three, four, five. Let's go to Cyberchef. And we're just going to XOR this with what we know is the beginning of the flag. Um, so XOR. We're going to XOR it with flag and the curly brace. We need to first change that from hex. So let's convert it from hex. From hex, we're XORing, and then we want to um, let's send it to decimal. We could do it in different formats. Send it to decimal, let's get it with a comma just to make it easy to copy and paste here. And we'll go and paste this in here. We also want to unhex this. I'm just going to import pwn tools to do this. So from pwn import all. And I'm just going to change this to unhex. We don't know what the last element is here, so I'm just going to set a zero for now. And then it's going to call encrypt. Encrypt is basically decrypt because it's a reversible function, right? So this is going to go through, and we basically have worked out, hopefully, what the first five values were that were generated by OS random whenever this was run. And hopefully, this is going to reverse. Oh. Unhex, um, unhex. So let's try it out. Run Python honeycomb. We get an error to say it's not subscriptable. Okay. Oh, bytes is a function. So we're passing in an array, but we're passing that into the function. So I'm just missing some uh, brackets. Let's try that again. We run through it, and okay, we're still printing out all this stuff. Let's get rid of this. We don't want to print out the keystream, and 
we also don't want it in hex, so let's just get rid of the hex here. We run through that, and we've got the flag bit. We can also see that we've got what looks like some text and some underscores, which is always good to see. The problem is we don't know what the last character is, so how are we gonna how are we gonna do this? Um, it's relatively simple. We can just brute force this. We've only got 255 possible values that that could be, so we can just say here for i in range of 255 we're going to run this, we're also going to print it each time and we'll just say that we're going to send in i here instead and if we run through that and it's going to give all 255 possibilities so we just need to scroll through them and see what looks good and it won't take as long to find this flag is simple XOR but with a twist um, so we could also, if we wanted to, we could print out what I is, and let's actually do that as well. Let's um, print I, and have a look for that simple one. Simple, okay, so 200 and, so it's the print before it, so 212. So if we go and update this and just say 212, let's get rid of the loop. And run it one last time and you'll see we get back our flag. So hopefully that was a nice simple demonstration of how we can use the reversible XOR function, how we can recover encrypted ciphertext if we know what some of the plain text is. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Thanks very much.